Member for Timmins James Bay for nine minutes, more or less. It is really important tonight of all nights that we discuss this issue because democracy is a fragile condition these days in the world of disinformation, political interference from foreign actors, and it is incumbent upon us as parliamentarians to reassure the public, to have, to give them reason to believe that public service has integrity. Mm -hmm. And so this is the reason that New Democrats came forward tonight to bring this motion, and we can see how excited the Conservatives are that, that once again uh, they're able to respond to the NDP lead on this. This is why on a number of issues we've used our position in Parliament not to burn the House to the ground, mm -hmm. but to try and find solutions. So when the Liberals overreached on, on Bill C-21, on the gun bill, and the Conservatives to them, they just loved this. They were just going to raise money off it. And we were like, no, we are going to find a solution so that farmers and hunters are not targeted. And we, we pushed relentlessly, negotiate. That's what you do in Parliament. The same on this issue with uh, getting Ms. Katie Telford to come before committee. The Conservatives were just using their tactics of character assassination and smear. And we said, no, the Liberals, we have to find a way that we can start getting answers. It was the New Democrats that were the first party, our leader, to call for a public inquiry. Mm -hmm. And tonight, we are the ones leading this discussion. And we need this tonight, Madam Speaker, because we are in a situation where we've just got these allegations that I think are explosive that a sitting member of parliament may have advised a senior Chinese official over the illegal detention, the hostage taking of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavar, the ones we know as the two Michaels. Mm -hmm. And that hostage taking of those two men was a real line that was crossed, I think, in this new century in terms of the breakdown of international order and international law. And it was incumbent upon all of us, regardless of party, to put the interests of those men and their family first. Now, I know the member in question has been accused. I've sat with him on committee. And I am not here to say whether or not those allegations are true. But I'm saying these allegations are so explosive that the Prime Minister must respond. And one of the ways the Prime Minister must respond now is by following the New Democrat call for a public inquiry to restore confidence. Because I'm not confident that just addressing this in a parliamentary committee is enough, because we are also dealing with serious um, state secret issues, state issues, because this, a lot of this comes through what CSIS is going to tell us and that. And quite frankly, I don't trust a Conservative leader with this kind of information anymore, because I see the tactics that he's brought forward. So I blame the Prime Minister for delaying and obfuscating and not addressing the seriousness of this issue and undermining public confidence. But I think it's equally dangerous to use the tactic of character assassination and smear and trashing anyone who stands in the way of the Conservative agenda on this. And I certainly would never uh, be comfortable knowing that state secrets could be brought to a committee knowing what they're doing. Because, Madam Speaker, say what you want about David Johnson. Or say what you want about the decision of the Prime Minister, whether it was right or wrong, to appoint a special rapporteur. But shame on Conservatives who trash the reputation of a former Governor General, a man appointed by Stephen Harper, a man who serves his country with dignity. He deserves better than this kind of smear. And, you know, I don't think I'll ever be invited to a Trudeau Foundation dinner. Uh, I'd be very surprised if I ever was. But when you have institutions that actually serve the public, it's not acceptable to decide to try and smear them as though they're some kind of Chinese communist-run foundation of friends and pals. That's ignorant. And I disagree with the Prime Minister on most things. But I would never stoop so low as to say that he's some kind of paid stooge of a foreign government. But that's the language that comes from the leader of the Conservative Party, and that's dangerous language because it's undermining confidence. I, you know, the first time I was called a traitor, I thought it was a joke because I serve my country with dignity. But it fits, I realize, language like calling people traitors and enemies is now part of Conservative discourse. This is why we have death threats in this country.
disinformation, the World Economic Forum. We have to rise above this. You know, there would have been a time where the Parliament of Canada would have been shocked and appalled that any member would have partied with extreme right neo-Nazi German extremists like Christine Anderson. Mm -hmm. But she is a folk hero to many on that side. There would have been a time when any conservative leader who knew that their members were cavorting with extreme right German extremist groups would have drawn a line, but that doesn't happen anymore. So we're in a situation where we're moving further and further away from where we need to be as an institution that reassures faith in the public that they can trust not only that our, demo our elections are completely uh, protected and the rights of citizens are protected, but that public institutions serve the public interest and that the people that we elect to serve are doing it with a belief that public service is a public good. And we have to get back there. And when we look at this situation that we have before us with these allegations of foreign interference, and we know there were serious questions during the convoy of Russian disinformation, proxy sites, the use of RT, uh, and it favored certain political interests in this country because it was undermining the present government. But there was serious questions about Russian disinformation in the convoy scandal. We need to make sure that we have the tools to examine, is this interfering with how our democracy operates? I think the situation of allegations of potential interference by Chinese uh, state actors is also concerning for another profound reason, Madam Speaker. We see a rise of anti-Asian hate in this country, anti-Asian violence. We have to say very clearly as parliamentarians, we are not exploiting this situation for our own personal political gain. We are deeply concerned, just as people in the Chinese community are concerned, just as people in the Iranian community would be concerned, or any other community about any potential foreign actors. This is why the Prime Minister needs to reassure the public that he understands this. Now, I respect David Johnson. I don't know that we needed him as a special rapporteur, but I believe that given the allegations that have come out tonight are very serious, I think the Prime Minister is going to have to, he must respond to those allegations. Mm -hmm. But I think it is incumbent upon the Prime Minister to say we have to take this out of the realm of the partisan uh, monkey house that sometimes this place has descended to in the last few days, put it into the hands of an independent inquiry that has the power to compel testimony, the power to ga gather documents, and... Uh. And I, I'm, it is my duty to interrupt the proceedings at this time and put forth with the question on the motion now 